Now here we are dealing with a judgment of a constitution bench of the Supreme Court. So we know what the Supreme Court has said, what the law is. Where is the question of asking for a presidential reference? But to have done, you know, to say that the president should have a reference on that, I don't know how far, uh, you know, the author really understands what presidential reference is. This is a very unhealthy trend, you know, of president issuing a statement every time the executive committee, you know, denying the statement. And um, I don't know whether any other president in future would like to take this office of president if this is the way he is to be treated. So basically, Mr. Adi Shakarwal is inviting such treatment upon himself. This is the president's letter. This is very wrong. जिसकी हमें तुरंत से तुरंत निंदा करनी पड़ेगी और इनके इन्होंने जो भी कंटेंट्स इसमें लिखे हैं इससे हमें दूरी बनानी पड़ेगी। And no one should attempt such irresponsible expression of views, which will undermine the credibility of the Supreme Court Bar Association. But there is a power in the general body to throw him out that now you don't deserve to be the president. But that can be done by the majority of the general body. Even now he doesn't seem to think that there is anything wrong in this. He says, well, I'm president of the SCBA, I can use the SCBA stationery, I can use this, that and the other. But that's totally incorrect. This. If there is opinion asked Mr. Adi Sagwal as a senior advocate, then he can give opinion. It was personal right. But to write a letter like this, he can't do it every time. He's a person, he's a good person as an individual is concerned. But he has done such a irreparable damage to the institution from his own capacity. Of course, nobody else is subscribing to that view. In the, no, not even one executive committee member of the Supreme Court bar is supporting that view. But if these kind of people get elected and this behave, start behaving like this, then as you rightly pointed out, the credibility of the institution, which is the SCBA, is getting eroded. Everything is not right with the SCBA in the manner in which we elect people. You know, over the years, uh, Supreme Court Bar Association is, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, I would say, losing the uh, the charm uh, losing the color uh, that it should really have as an uh, you know uh, as a highest courts uh, body because uh, unfortunately we are not able to elect the right people uh, in the first instance so all doesn't seem to be well in the supreme court bar association SCBA President Adish Agrawal's recent letter to the President of India against Supreme Court's electoral bonds verdict and SCBA coming out distancing itself from his statements and condemning them has sparked a controversy. The question that arises is, can a sitting SCBA President question the top court's verdict in such a manner and that too without the executive committee's consensus? We have spoken at length to multiple members of the executive committee and also former SCBA presidents in this regard. The former SCBA presidents have called Mr. Agrawal's action highly inappropriate, which could lead to lowering of the image of SCBA and also affect its credibility. They have said that Mr. Agrawal had no right to make such statements without at least first going to the executive committee or the general body. According to them, if Mr. Agrawal's purpose was to gain some cheap publicity, then he has in fact succeeded. They've also pointed out that the reference that has been sought by Mr. Agrawal is legally not possible and also shows his complete lack of knowledge of the constitution and functioning of the Indian judiciary.
so firstly it was highly inappropriate for him to have written this letter uh, especially uh, mentioning himself to be president of supreme court bar association so if he write something in his personal capacity uh, normally it is not something which is uh, something unknown but uh, normally even as president of the bar even for personal capacity i never thought that i should write anything controversial you know which uh, will um, you know um, in uh, you know um, the members of the bar may feel that there is some kind of a you know breach of faith of doing something contrary so i personally feel that uh, when you are the president of the bar you have to take the executive committee as as your you know uh, the whole of the executive committee you represent the whole of the executive committee and if you want to talk on something controversial or something where you want to take a very uh, st important stand then it is always appropriate for you to call for an executive committee meeting take their views if there is a consensus uh, then you are able to issue a statement if there is no consensus then you are not supposed to issue a statement because uh, although in my term as in my three terms as president um, uh, i always uh, whenever i issued a statement even in my own capacity it never happened that the executive committee i did not have them in confidence you know so to say yeah. before issuing any kind of a statement and so this is very you know very i would say unbecoming of the president and uh, demeaning the uh, organization itself which is the supreme court bar association where president has to be uh, you know repeatedly told that you are acting way beyond uh, what has been uh, what what you can do as president of the bar and being ticked off like this and this ultimately uh, results in lowering the prestige of the scba uh, amongst the general public what do you think as an executive committee member of the scba was the letter written in a right spirit absolutely not i mean uh, the letter itself is uh, absurd if i may call it i mean firstly uh, you know asking the president to make a presidential reference and in the meantime not implement the supreme court judgment that is completely wrong i mean uh, presidential reference the whole concept of a presidential reference is where the law is unclear and the government uh, wants some clarity on the law then a presidential reference is made so that the supreme court can give its opinion on what the law is now here we are dealing with a judgment of a constitution bench of the supreme court so we know what the supreme court has said what the law is where is the question of asking for a presidential reference uh, secondly and and this is a serious matter which we in the uh, scba executive took up that i mean you know he seems to have a habit of writing uh, letters uh, uh, describing himself as president of the scba which gives the impression to people and to journalists and it's been reported in several newspapers that the scba has written this that this letter is written on behalf of the scba nothing could be further from the truth it was not discussed in the executive of the scba it is not uh, we don't agree with it at all and therefore i mean this is totally wrong in writing uh, a letter even though this was not earlier it written a letter about take suomoto action against farmers that was on the scba letter head this time he is used some all india bar association letter head but then at below his signature he writes that Pres uh, adi shagarwal president scba again giving the impression that it's on behalf of the scba so that is the second problem that uh, again and again he keeps writing his own personal things which uh, you may be completely wrong and uh, uh, gives the impression that it's uh, this is the scba saying this well first and foremost i must uh, commend what the executive committee of the supreme court bar association has done by condemning the act of the president its own president in having sent that letter and having signed it as the president of the scba uh, i am so happy that the executive committee took up this matter so quickly and has uh, issued a, a very very clear categorical you know denial uh, of any association with the content of that letter which means that uh, uh, the president uh, uh, wrote that letter in his personal capacity now i don't know what his personal capacity is besides being a president because uh, i don't think uh, uh, you know he really has uh, uh, any kind of a uh, reason or basis to have written that letter uh, because uh, you know one thing is very important that as lawyers and especially as the supreme court bar association 
one of the most fundamental duties is for a lawyer is to you know uphold the rule of law and the judgment of the supreme court uh, is uh, really something which we must respect whether we like it or not we have a right to you know say whether judgment is right or wrong we can objectively criticize but to have done you know to say that the president should have a reference on that i don't know how far uh, uh, you know the author really understands what presidential reference is what is the constitutional limitation or uh, you know compass of that presidential power is and whether you know uh, it uh, it can really be uh, done when a clear cut judgment has been given by the supreme court uh, it would be unthinkable that the president would uh, make a reference to override a judgment of the supreme court so i don't think uh, uh, the author of that letter uh, really has understood the scope and ambit of presidential reference and whether in the circumstances it was really required because the judgment really is to uphold the democracy and the voters rights and it would be therefore in the larger interest of public that this judgment is uh, you know uh, i think uh, respected and revered by one and all citizens in the country but as the president of the supreme court bar association or to that extent anyone else cannot express any view other than that of the collective opinion of the executive committee so unless and until an executive committee meeting was held or any emergency arise a decision is taken collectively by circulation nobody has the right to take the name of the scba or propagate their personal agenda through the medium of the supreme court bar association do you think it's uh, proper for a sitting sub scba president to make such statements and to write such a letter to the president i think it is not at all good for any lawyer much less a president of the supreme court bar association and when he calls himself writes on the that he is a president of the supreme court bar association he wants to con- uh, try to convey that he is talking on behalf of the supreme court bar association although he is not specifically says so but it obviously means and secondly <coughs> the 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 judgments of the supreme courts cannot be uh, uh, changed away by the president of india our constitution has no such provision i understand that he has not even discussed with the executive committee of the supreme court bar association or the general body of the supreme court bar association before making such a statement therefore he has no business to write his name in that letter as president supreme court bar association you see we have already passed a resolution Uh, the supreme court bar association has passed a resolution condemning uh, the letter written by the president of the association the very suggestion that the uh, judgment of the honorable apex court be not implemented uh, is contrary to the basic principles of law we are a democracy governed by rule of law and we stand with the uh, supreme court as an institution and the supreme court is entitled to decide whether a particular law made by parliament or by a state legislature whatever is the final interpretation that is final and the president of india or any other constitutional authority has absolutely no right uh, to stay the decision or to refuse to implement it. इसी से इस मामले में कोई बात नहीं हुई और उन्होंने जो लेटर लिखा वो एक कोई एसोसिएशन है ऑल इंडिया करके उस पर लिखा है बट उस लेटर हेड पे उनका लेटर हेड में भी नाम मेंशन है एजे आदिश अग्रवाल प्रेसिडेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन और नीचे जहां वो सिग्नेचर करते हैं वहां भी मेंशन है there are no rules in place in fact um, um, uh, the supreme court bar association 
gives the president a very uh, important place in the organization and in fact there is one rule if i am not mistaken which says that if there is no clarity on an issue then the president of the bar has the uh, you know uh, right to uh, do whatever he wants uh, unless he is uh, uh, unless some, unless the general body says otherwise so that's the kind of power which the president of the scba has and that has also been noticed in one judgment of the supreme court but that does not mean that you take up a controversial issue you know so for instance if you recall when the four judges had gone on uh, the uh, gone to the press and uh, i was the press that was my first term as president so we immediately called an executive committee meeting and we felt that it's a very grave situation affecting the functioning of the scba uh, or the supreme court inst- as an institution so we could uh, generate a consensus on what should be our stand and it is our uh, stand you know which ultimately resulted in the system of having um, you know rosters there was no roster in supreme court prior to that so when the bar when as leader of the bar when we in the ec decided that there should be a roster and there should be transparency in the ali- assignment of matters uh, the then chief justice uh, justice deepak mishra agreed to our suggestion and the roster system was brought in so these are mo- matters of moment you know where the supreme court bar association has to rise to the occasion and ensure that the functioning of the institution or there is a threat to the rule of law uh, at those instances the scba should play a very proactive role but that proactive role always has to be uh, with a consensus building in the executive committee it can't be a unilateral decision of the president of the bar and uh, this is a very unhealthy trend you know of president issuing a statement every time the executive committee you know denying the statement and um, i don't know whether any other president in future would like to take this office of president if this is the way he is to be treated so basically mr adish agarwal is inviting such treatment upon himself uh, uh, commenting on the farmers protest also or in this case and not only uh, it, this this gives a very bad light because the shows have been very bad light because he also doesn't know the law a presidential reference cannot you know stay uh, even if there is a reference cannot amount to judgment of the supreme court being stayed uh, uh, till the reference is decided so i don't understand uh, how he can even make a statement of this kind it shows his uh, complete lack of the constitution and it's uh, functioning as far as the judiciary is concerned it does and which is why on both occasions we've had to scramble and come out with a clarification that look this is written not by the scba we have nothing to do with it we don't agree with it we uh, distance ourselves uh, from it but you know this can't go on like this that each time uh, he and even now he doesn't seem to think that there is anything wrong in this he says well i am president of the scba i can use the scba stationery i can use this that and the other but that's totally incorrect this as president of the scba he has to reflect the views of the scba not his own personal views and in something like this i mean uh, saying that don't disclose the uh, the people who have donated uh, these bonds etc that's a contrary to the supreme court judgment it puts the supreme court in a poor light and b it is uh, i mean it doesn't make any sense it seems like he is holding a brief for either the government or for some of the people who've donated the bonds saying that uh, uh, don't uh, disclose their names etc so this is happening for the second time in the recent past where the executive committee of the scba is categorically issuing a resolution to distance itself from something that the president has seen Now, so as somebody who has been the president of the scba do you think this common occurrence does this usually happen that the president and the executive committee are on completely different pages with regard to issues no i i this is definitely unusual because uh, you know i have been a president three times i had my own differences with my executive committee from time to time <coughs> but i always carried them with me and i must say that i was very lucky that <coughs> despite sharp differences the committee always you know stood by me and uh, whenever i wanted to write anything it would always be in my individual capacity as a senior lawyer it would never be said that you know it is being written uh, by a president of the supreme court bar association uh, so i i don't think this kind of a uh, you know action should really be done 
uh, it is not in larger interest of the institution because you know this is the uh, 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 association of the highest court of the country and we must be an exemplar for every bar association in the country where there must be complete harmony within the committee so <coughs> i would say that uh, this was not only unusual but it was unpleasant and avoidable yes that is true because uh, the the uh, supreme court bar association is a very very important organization for the whole country because it is of the supreme court bar association so in our country the last word comes in the Supreme Court. Therefore, from all high courts, whatever judgments are there can be challenged in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court may accept them or may not uh, accept. But the final word is in the Supreme Court. And therefore, a president of the Supreme Court Bar Association should be very, very clear as to what he should say and what he not say. And additionally, he has no business to write in the letter itself that he is the president of the, of course, he is a president of SCBA today. But when he gives a letter like this, which is very, very uh, un un unfortunate, and then at the end of the letter, he calls himself as the president of SCBA. He wants to convey that this is what he is doing, is 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 doing as a president of the Supreme Court Bar Association, and also therefore suggesting that the Supreme Court Bar Association also agrees to what is written in the letter. Well, the action is as concerned for this, there will be no no provision to be taken any action. But there is a power in the general body to throw him out that now you don't deserve to be the president. But that can be done by the majority of the general body. It cannot be done by the executive committee. Sir, uh ये दूसरी बार है कुछ हफ्तों में उन्होंने ऐसा लेटर दोबारा लिखा है तो आपका इसका पे क्या व्यू है देखिए जैसे ही पहले जब उन्होंने लेटर लिखा था जिसमें आप सुओ मोटो वाले की बात कर रहे होंगे उसमें हम लोग ने तत्काल प्रभाव से उसकी निंदा की थी कि वो हमारा काम नहीं है सुप्रीम कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन का ये काम नहीं है और जो अभी लेटर लिखा जैसे ही हम लोगों को जानकारी हुई हमारे सेक्रेटरी मिस्टर रोहित पांडे वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर परजोशी युगान्द्रा ट्रेजरार एंड मिस्टर अमरिंदर जैसे ही हम लोग को पता चला हम लोग ने तुरंत कौन कॉल पे बात की सीनियर एडवोकेट जो भी है हमारे मिस्टर जयंत भूषण नरेंद्र हुड्डा अर्जित प्रसाद एंड अदर से बात होके हम लोग इस नतीजे पर पहुँचे कि ये जो प्रेसिडेंट साहब ने लेटर भेजा है ये बहुत ही गलत है जिसकी हमें तुरंत से तुरंत निंदा करनी पड़ेगी और इनके इन्होंने जो भी कंटेंट इसमें लिखे हैं इससे हमें दूरी बनानी पड़ेगी तो हम लोगों ने तुरंत इसके लिए संज्ञान में लेते हुए तुरंत इनका इससे दूरी बनाई और इसको कंडेम किया प्रेसिडेंट साहब को देर इज एनी इशू इन विच यू आर गोइंग टू क्रिटिसाइज द जजमेंट्स आर यू आर गोइंग टू मेक ए पोलिटिकल स्टेटमेंट इन दो सर्कम स्टांसेज यू टेक इट फ्रॉम मी दैट नन ऑफ द बार एसोसिएशन द मेम्बर्स ऑफ द बार दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू एक्सेप्ट इट even if you write some letter for a strike or even candle march like our former president because singh tried to do that but uh, our senior advocates like farid nariman k k benugopal 150 lawyers had written and in those days the b block did we said you can't do this so none of the bar association office bearers should be doing anything which is going to demean the institution of supreme court bar association uh, how does it affect the image of the uh, association sir because would it not lead to people questioning the credibility of uh, an association which is supposed to represent the entire bar so actually the problem that has arisen especially in the uh, uh, you know uh, as the shagrawal taking over as the president of the supreme court bar is that he has uh, uh, no you know uh, stakes in this institution he is not a regular practitioner of this court uh, he, he could get elected because of the division of votes so many people contesting he he got in barely by about 30% of the votes uh, total polled or even probably less than that so uh, somebody who is an outsider to this institution if he comes in as president of the bar then these kind of things uh, definitely result in lowering the image of the uh, institution which is the supreme court bar association and that is why uh, i recently justice the bench of justice surya kant and justice uh, k v vishwanathan i had made some suggestions that there should be further uh, tightening of uh, the eligibility for people to contest as president of the bar and the court has agreed to my suggestion and a general body meeting is being called for that so that in future we should ensure that people who are who have no stakes in this institution do not get elected as president of this institution and uh, hopefully the general body will uh, you know 
pass those uh, resolutions which i have uh, suggested is there any action that the executive committee has you know even thought of taking against the mr agarwala as of now see the question of uh, taking action we have given a clear indication to him on the last occasion when he attempted to write a letter to the honorable chief justice of india regarding the farmers agitation the basic duty of an advocate is not only towards his client an advocate is an officer of the court also and an advocate is a custodian of the constitution of india also so when we are saying being the president of the bar itself that you have to take action against freedom of expression and peaceful protest or vo- raising voice against anything we permissible under the constitution or the law of the particular area or the country a statement from a bar associations office bearer whether in his private capacity or in the collective capacity is absolutely unthinkable and one should never attempt such things which will ultimately we have to take up the cause of the common man and the democracy if the democracy is not there there will be no question of expressing anybody's views thereafter what that's what probably it's an oversight from him <laughs> according to him whatever he has written i is in his personal capacity as an individual it has nothing to do with supreme court bar association if it is written as the president of the supreme court bar association he should regret it and he should make it very clear and you know we are the custodians of the liberty and freedom of the people and once we are going to question the supreme court the lawyers and the supreme court bar which is supposed to be there a part and parcel bar and bench is equal contributors of the justice delivery system and we cannot undermine our own existence if the supreme court is not there nothing remains so we cannot be a party to discredit the supreme court or question the authority of the judges of the supreme court i i don't quite agree with that i mean i think uh, everybody has the right to make fair comment on uh, any judgment whether it be of the uh, any high court or the supreme court or even a constitution bench of the supreme court so long as there is fair criticism one is entitled to make it but i mean the the kind of uh, thing that he said and this according to me is an outstanding judgment of the supreme court very very important for uh, you know cleanliness in electoral politics very important for people's right to know etc etc so quite apart from the fact that i don't agree with what he has said but uh, to uh, uh, i mean I, as i said there are two major problems with this letter one is that he is misusing the name of the scba and the second is that to i mean uh, to ask the president to make a reference about the correctness of a supreme court judgment that itself is an absurd thing well i can definitely say uh, one thing i don't know how far the author of the letter has really understood the uh, judgment and what is its implications what were the constitutional issues before the supreme court and how the supreme court has dealt with it i think uh, it it requires a very serious <coughs> understanding of what because the court's judgment is a, is truly an authority on constitutional provision especially you know right of uh, information uh, right uh, uh, you know of the citizens and uh, you know affecting uh, uh, democracy in this country and the elections so i think it is a judgment which has very far reaching consequences and for someone to casually you know write this kind of a letter and <coughs> seek a presidential reference without really understanding the ramifications is definitely it shows that it is uh, uh, for uh, uh, it's not really for the objective of 
you know, uh, 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 questioning the judgment, but rather, uh, you know, seeking some kind of a publicity in the matter. So I, I don't think uh, it has been, uh, it has been uh, rightly uh, done what has been done. Uh, it is unfortunate. And as I said, it should have been avoided. So legally speaking, uh, would this amount to questioning the constitution bench verdict in the electoral bonds case? Actually, by writing these kind of letters, you get onto the front page of every newspaper. If that is his only purpose, then probably he has succeeded in that. Uh, whether the EC was consulted by Mr. Agarwala before this letter was put out? There was no question of consultation. There is no question of information at all about any such thing because this is all his own brain child and his personal view and uh, Bar Association, so ex Supreme Court Bar Executives, neither knowledge about it nor information about it nor any meeting was held or anything was discussed in any meeting. So whether this uh, letter written by Mr. Agarwala, this was this even consulted with the election uh, ex ele uh, executive committee at some point? No, of time there was time. no such consultation had by Mr. Agarwala before he wrote letters. Uh, the first letter uh, uh, requesting Supreme Court to take so more to action against agitating farmers, and the second letter writing to the President of India. At both occasions. Uh, the issue was not discussed with the members of the association. You see, first of all, uh, none of the bar association presidents should exceed their authority by not taking the approval of the executive committee and make any statement. In this particular case, uh, in which the, he has made a statement against uh, farmers movement or something like this, in those cases, what I feel, and rightly so, now this uh, 150 members have also given some representation and which is going to be presented before the general body meeting and it may they may take the decision appropriately. But that is not the issue. The issue is once you have selected someone, once you have elected someone and thereafter if he is not behaving, the person himself should be more uh, careful about making any statement because the self-restraint is must for any of the law professional. Already, even previously, when he wrote that letter about the farmers, we told him, in fact, in that resolution, we were adding something about, uh, uh, you know, that he should not use the stationery, etc., to which he said, no, 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 I won't do it. And so, therefore, that was not done. So, he knows that it is not to be done. Now, insofar as action is concerned, I must tell you that uh, there is a requisition by more than 150 members of the SCBA. Uh, to remove Mr. Agarwal as president of the SCBA and that will be taken up sometime in April. I think the general body meeting is scheduled for sometime in April where that, that is one of the issues that will be taken up as to whether he should be removed or not. As of now, the Supreme Court Bar Association, the executive committee of Supreme Court Bar Association is not contemplating any action. However, there is one requisition from the bar members for passing a no confidence motion against him. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, if that goes to the general body of the uh, association and uh, some action is taken on that. So, as far as I am concerned, in my three terms, uh, I have never had any occasion where there is a pressure from the government. Uh, it's actually uh, people, you know, wanting to lap up to the uh, government and show that we are favorable to you and try to take favors from them. So, this is what is happening in, in most of these bar associations. So, either you try to, you know, sort of um, uh, say things which are palatable to the government or you th say things only which is palatable to the judges and you, you know, sort of uh, um, uh, become a, a president or, or gets yourself elected hoping that you will find favor with the judges in your matters, etc. So if these are the considerations for somebody to get for getting himself elected, I think it's a, uh, it's a very, very sad state of affairs because ultimately the credibility of the institution, which is the Supreme Court, depends on a very independent bar 
and a um, you know responsive uh, um, judiciary or, or judges so that uh, that balance will be lost if there is no credible bar to because that's the only association i feel which can take up issues without fear of uh, you know being uh, uh, suffering a, so for instance if i am representing a client and i feel that the judge has done something wrong at some stage i have to realize that ultimately if i say more than this it will be my client which will be suffering but if a bar association takes up an issue obviously there is nothing which they can do to the association itself so really speaking that's the only check i feel which can be on the institution if there is a credible bar and which raises important issues for um, uh, you know for the um, institutional integrity but if these kind of people get elected and this behave start behaving like this then as you rightly pointed out the credibility of the institution which is the scba is getting eroded it's it's a very poor message about the you know credibility of the supreme court and the supreme court bar association it puts us in a very very poor light and which is why uh, we need to take this very very seriously and do whatever needs to be done about it but you know uh, on a on a uh, sort of more general note we as lawyers in the supreme court need to be careful as to who we elect as our uh, president or somebody to uh, voice our views etc so i mean it just shows that uh, uh, everything is not right with the scba in the manner in which we elect people somebody like dushyant dave who is an outstanding uh, you know member of the bar and a, a top lawyer he uh, 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 he was defeated by adish agarwal in the elections i mean which is unthinkable according to me but that is how uh, politics has become see what really bothers me is that speed at which the media picks up these letters without really understanding the gravity of the matter so there is something more than what meets the eye i mean uh, why is it that uh, almost every newspaper in the country would carry this kind of a letter which according to me on merit has no substance at all so <coughs> so there is something uh, you know uh, something going on uh, you know between the lines i don't know uh, i mean who is really behind it and why it has been done well, that's, for, that's for people can... to speculate that's for people to speculate but so far as the internal affairs of the uh, committee is concerned <coughs> i think it's their job committee has some outstanding members uh, you know who are uh, uh, who are very good who who really can steer the executive committee and therefore the supreme court bar association in the right direction and they can uh, prevail upon you know any kind of a wrong doing by this uh, president uh, so i think uh, to that extent i would say committee has done a fantastic job and uh, i mean rest of it is you know uh, yes of course it has dented the image of the uh, uh, supreme court bar association uh, very strongly and uh, you know uh, over the years uh, supreme court bar association is uh, uh you know is uh, i would say losing the uh, the charm uh, losing the color uh, that it should really have as an uh, you know uh, as a highest courts uh, body because uh, unfortunately we are not able to elect the right people uh, in the first instance so but that's a long story that's something which i think uh, only time will tell how we will go about it we have to be responsible as lawyers but that's also an important point that you're making because do you think that the supreme court bar association needs to redeem itself and come back to the earlier glory where it's looked up to as a bar association yes yes of course every bar association today in the country needs to really uh, i think uh, gather its uh, steam and uh, you know try and see that uh, the bar associations are in the hands of people who are right thinking and who really actually can do something not only for the institution of judiciary but also the members of the bar because there are great challenges which are being faced by uh, <coughs> by lawyers across and uh, you know issues uh, which are so fundamental about their very existence of this large uh, number of lawyers it's only you know 10 or 20% of lawyers who are very successful rest of them are not and we are not able to do anything about them we are also not able to do anything about litigants who are clamoring for justice so these are all issues which bar associations are unable to project much less solve 
So I think, uh, yes, we need, uh, we need to introspect very seriously as institutions, including in the Supreme Court Bar Association, to see that uh, we can do something genuinely concrete and not have some, you know, I mean, the bodies only for the purpose of photographs and functions th that we have, you know, turned ourselves into. But sir, office, uh, SCBA ka office use karna or usko different forum se letter likna bar bar ye misconduct nahi hai sir? Misconduct uh, to nahi kahenge misuse jarur keh sakte hai. Ke is uh, association ke president pad ka misuse uh, ho jata hai, jo wo kar dete hai, usse hi rokne ke liye hum log turant aap dekhte honge ki har dousre din hum log turant ek मतलब सेक्रेटरी की तरफ से हम लोग निकालते हैं लेटर हेड पे क्लियर करते हैं कि भाई ये हमारा मत नहीं है ऐसी स्थितियां वो बार बार ला देते हैं जिसके लिए हमने उन्हें रोका भी है उनसे बात किया कि आप ऐसे काम ना करें जिससे कि इंस्टीट्यूशन की सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गरिमा और सुप्रीम कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन की गरिमा दोनों को नीचे नहीं गिरने someone who is well versed with the workings of the Supreme Court Bar Association, what options does the executive committee have to redeem itself? I mean, except for publishing resolutions, which they are now doing on a very regular basis. But what else can they do? I'm sure the executive uh, committee knows what its responsibility is. So it's not for me to really sermonize them. They know what, what is uh, lacking, what is uh, to be done. Uh, for the, you know, ultimately two things are most important. We are all, uh, you know, stakeholders, important stakeholders in administration of justice. And we all know administration of justice is facing very, very serious challenge today. And the biggest victim is justice in the institution. Therefore, we really have to, you know, uh, uh, do something extraordinary. Uh, we have to think out of box as to how we can really restore the uh, uh, restore the image of the institution, restore the image of the uh, bar associations and ensure at the same time that uh, high quality justice is available to litigants as quickly as possible. Individually speaking, what I can say is that we as the executive has totally failed in discharging our functions. In my individual capacity, and my opinion is that the entire Supreme Court Bar Association Executive Committee should resign now. Because if we cannot control our president, or if we cannot control our Executive Committee members in taking up the cause for which they are elected. We are not elected here for a political purpose. I may have a political view, Mr. Agarwal may have a political view, you may have a political view. That cannot be a reason to use the platform of the Supreme Court Bar Association for gaining the personal agenda. The moment you are doing that, you are destroying the institution of the executive committee of the Supreme Court Bar Association. Personally, I am ashamed of the conduct of the executive committee. I don't want to blame Mr. Agarwal alone. It is our weakness. I am a part of the executive committee. In the last five months, there was no executive committee meeting was called. It is something which we have to understand. The after writing a letter on the last occasion also, we have come out with a resolution disagreeing with Mr. Agarwal and communicated to him. And some of the members, 150 members, I think have signed a representation to call a general body meeting and remove him from the presidency. Yes, that I is, think the voting is tomorrow. No, 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 no. That is pending. I think the Honorable Supreme Court uh, bench uh, one of the bench is, uh, uh, it is under the purview of that, which uh, another petition was pending. So a committee is formed now. In my view, the entire executive should resign now. At least I am going to resign. Whether other members are resigning or not going to resign. 
जो मीडिया में रिपोर्टिंग होती है जो न्यूज जाती है उससे इंस्टीट्यूशन की गरिमा गिरती है अगर आप कोई भी अखबार उठाएं उसमें लिखा होता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट बॉडी तो उसमें बार एसोसिएशन पूरा आ जाता है वहां हम लोग परेशान हो जाते हैं और उन्हें हर बार समझाने की कोशिश करते हैं कि फ्यूचर में आप ऐसा ना करें सर अग, अब हम मे में इलेक्शन शायद एस के ड्यू है तो सर क्या इन सब चीजों का उस पर प्रभाव पड़ेगा देखिए ये क्वेश्चन थोड़ा पॉलिटिकल है बार का इलेक्शन मेंबर्स डिसाइड करते हैं मेंबर्स तय करेंगे कि क्या ऐसे ही चलाना है या चेंज करना है Speaking exclusively to India today, the Executive Committee of the Supreme Court Bar Association has raised serious concerns regarding the letter penned by the Supreme Court Bar Association President Adi Shagarwala to the President of India. Executive Committee members stress that uh, using the SCBA's name to promote personal views is inappropriate and undermines the authority of the apex bar body. They also note that there was no consultation with the Executive Committee regarding the letter. The multiple executive committee members we spoke to have all condemned the letter as absurd and inappropriate noting that Agarwala had been previously cautioned against such actions across the bar the sentiment has been echoed that the questioning the wisdom of the supreme court as implied in Agarwala's letter was unacceptable members have stressed that the SCBA does not endorse Agarwala's views and urged for a better judgment particularly with the Supreme Court Bar Association elections looming in the coming months the executive committee members unanimously agreed that it is crucial to maintain the integrity of the institution by refraining from such actions especially from the president of the primary bar association of the apex court from new delhi kanu sarda nalini sharma and shristi ojha for india today